so we all know that it's a party when we're talking about the festival. it's a three week festival and but it's not just about the party. there's of course a charity aspect here as well. we're talking about four charities in particular. it's all about focusing on the health and social issues of the caribbean community and i want to introduce you now to denise herrera jackson she's the soul of the festival. she believes in giving back. put your hands together for her to tell us more about the charity aspect. denise herrera jackson well welcome to the media launch for the social life of the carnival and leslie we really like to thank you and the amazing staff here at the ontario science center they've done a great job for us today and we also want to thank you for the continued partnership that you have with the festival. Uh, before I get into talking about our charities, I just wanted to talk about the support that we get from our sponsors and to thank Scotiabank um, for their continued support. They were a part of the first festival in 1967, so we're really glad that they have continued um, their support of this festival. The Toronto Star was also there in 1967. And that's really great because if you have provided the, the kind of history that we need for the festival. We'd also like to thank all of our government partners, the City of Toronto, which as you know has hosted this festival from, um, from its inception, the province of Ontario and the tourism affiliates, which include Tourism Toronto and the Ontario Tourism Marketing Partnership. We have our media sponsors also to thank the Toronto Star, as I said before, and all its affiliates. The Bell Media Group of CP24, CTP, and Flow 93.5. We also have a number of other sponsors who are with us in the festival. The Chevrolet, the Ontario Lottery Group, Eldorado Run, Liberty Grand, Red Stripe Bear, Grace Kennedy, and a number of our own community um, supporters. In addition, we partner, as I said, with great institutions like uh, the, um, the Science Centre and along with the Royal Ontario Museum, the Toronto Public Library Band, and of course, community uh, media like the Caribbean Camera. Now, as we move closer to the start of the festival that we know everybody is looking at in anticipation, we all know you have designers, artisans, painters, composers, and musicians. They are already preparing for the events that continue to attract people to the city of Toronto for what we call an authentic carnival. Visits are being made to masquerade camps, to view costumes being created, to the Calypso tents to hear the new compositions, because the, the, the fascinating thing about this festival is that every year we always reach and there's always something new. So it's important uh, for, for people to be aware of the, the creativity that goes in. And then, of course, you have, you've heard the, the Steve Pan performances this year. And we have the Ontario Steve Pan Association, which is one of our, our, our partners and stakeholders in this festival, and the organization of Calypso Performing Artists, who um, host all the Steve Pan events. So as we know, the costumes, the Calypso, and the Steve Pan are the hallmarks of the festival. But apart from that, as Kuja indicated, we have also realized that we have a, a, a commitment to supporting a number of charitable causes. Uh, one of our favorites is the Children's Breakfast Club. They've been with the festival for a long time. They also participate in the Junior Convoy, which is one of the events that we have. We are also supporting the Caribbean Children's Foundation that works with St. Kitts Hospital. And then, of course, Prostate Cancer Canada and the Sickle Cell Awareness Group of Ontario. We need them to, to help in their education programs. And you'll hear more about it when the next speaker, Dan, who comes up to talk to us. We are also in the sector where we provide scholarships to students at Seneca College. And this is an initiative that was headed by Colin Benjamin and Rick Oslin, also from the Children's Breakfast Club. And that has been going on for more than 12 years. We are so happy because we receive the support of a lot of many people, mostly from our committed group of volunteers. They, are, they act in so many different ways as event managers, as planners, as logistics personnel, as schedulers. And they work closely with the City of Toronto and all the associated departments and services that are required to be engaged to make this festival happen. So we need to thank our volunteers and we do thank them for all the support that they have continued to give. And we also want to thank you for being here today. 
as we have provided a snapshot of this year's festival. Thank you.